All right, folks, welcome back to the channel and to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week we're in Whitehall, Michigan, playing at White Lake Golf Club for this piece of hardware right here. This is the McNabb Cup. The McNabb Cup is one of the premier events of the Michigan Hickory Tour, hosted by Jim Davis, and it's one event that I plan on making it up to every year. So White Lake Golf Club was originally designed by Tom Bendelow in 1916. Uh, most of the holes of that original design are now on the back nine, and we'll show you those as we go. Bendelow, known as the Johnny Appleseed of American Golf, having designed over 600 courses over the course of a 35-year career. So here's what's in the bag, sponsored by Stewart and Jacoby, using my primary hickory set for this round, but no brassy. Uh, title is True Field Ball, as usual. And here's the scorecard for the front nine. I'll be keeping score for this round in the course vlog, but will most importantly be keeping track of Stableford points. In Stableford, you assign point values to bogeys or better, and in this case, it'll be a uh, score based on net. So here's number one, par five, 476 yards. Before we get things started, we need a ceremonial tee shot, and Roger Hill, commissioner of the Michigan Hickory Tour and co-founder of the Society of Hickory Golfers, did that for us. Here are my playing partners today. This is Tim Strohshine. I'll have to show you the other in a moment. I missed his tee shot. Definitely want to stay out of the rough here at White Lake. You'll see that over the course of this course vlog, uh, how much different it is to be in the rough and, and why you want to stay out of it. That was a pretty good shot there though with the mashy. Here's my other playing partner today, Dave Lippa. So just to give you a little background on this round, this was the fourth course in three days that I had played. Uh, this was part of the Michigan Hickory Golf Course Tour that I did with Andy Grow in September of 2022, where we played Wekwetansing, Harbor Point, and Wawashkimo. So up to this point, we had already put in 54 holes of golf, and we were both physically uh, feeling it. But um, over the course of this round, I felt more focused than any other round I played all year. And I can't really explain it other than just, you know, my physical limitations kind of, you know, caused me to just focus on each shot and uh, stay in the moment. And uh, it felt really good. Um, I, I, you know, the score wasn't the best of my, of my entire season, but it was pretty good. And uh, just the mental focus that I had throughout the round helped me feel like this was the best round I played all year. So I thought it was fitting that this would be the final course vlog I show you from the 2022 course vlog season. All right, we're going to move on to number three because number two was under repair. So everyone in the field got a par, which was nice of Jim Davis to do. And number three is an easy going par three, 121 yards. So number one is part of the original Bendelo design, but then we go across the street and this next series of holes that we're going to be playing before uh, number 10 were all added in 1925 by then club president E.E. E. Roberts. And I think you'll be able to tell the difference uh, in how these holes look. Uh, from holes 2 through 9 versus 10 through 18, the original Bendelow layout. The holes back here are much more wooded, and uh, the holes in the back nine, the original Bendelow design, are, are more of a marshland type setting. All right, number four, par four, 301 yards. One thing I will say about Robert's design here, though, on uh, these holes 2 through 9, are that he definitely used the topography in the same way that Bendelo was known to use it. Uh, just kind of placed the course into the natural topography. And um, yeah, it feels like a Bendelo course throughout, in my opinion. This hole reminded me of Excelsior Springs in Missouri and other Bendelo courses that I've played. So nice seamless way to incorporate the original designer with the additional holes that were added back here in 1925. I felt like my pace with putts was pretty good. I was getting a lot of good reads from Tim, but uh, Tim was getting the raw end of the deal on his putts. 
Several of them coming up short, as you're going to see over the course of the round. All right, number five, par four, 383 yards. By the scorecard, this is the toughest hole on the course. You definitely want to stay left here so that you've got a good angle into the green. I was feeling pretty good with the Tom Stewart driving iron off the tee today. You'll see several good shots that boosted my confidence with this club even further. The Mashie was the club that was giving me a little bit of trouble. And uh, I've mentioned in the last couple course vlogs at this point that this particular Mashie, the Tom Morris Mashie, um, was just not cooperating with me. And uh, fortunately, this shot turned out exactly how I kind of drew it up. But um, generally speaking, I just wasn't feeling very confident with it and had a tendency to hit it fat, which you're going to see. I have since replaced this Tom Morris Mashie with a Tom Stewart Mashie that you'll see in the 2023 course vlogs coming up. All right, number six, par four, 332 yards. As I mentioned, we are keeping track of Stableford points based off of your net score. So I've already racked up 13 points, which is the most that I've had in any Stableford round. I really like Stableford scoring. I mean, I think it's the best format for high handicap players because it makes it fun. And, um, you know, especially when you, you base the point values off of your net score. Uh, there are only a couple ho holes, I think, in this entire round where I didn't score a point. And uh, I think this was one of them, okay. based on this poor start here. Tim found himself in some trouble under this tree, but got some good contact on this ball to get out. That was a really good out. Thank you. Here I'm using the, the Walter Hagen Iron Man. This is a shot that I've been practicing but did not do it very well there. Fortunately, sculled it to get through the bunker, but obviously was just trying to get it up and over. You can see this green severely slopes back to front. So I was tentative of that, but I needed to give it a little more than that. So I needed this to drop for a point And that's about as close as you can get without making it. All right, number seven, par three, 155 yards. I haven't shown you too many of Dave's shots up to this point. He had a uh, rough start to the round, but really started to turn it on with this hole going forward. Just settled into a nice groove. Get up there. Well, you got a nice hop forward there. That'll work. I ended up pushing that tee shot right with the mashie. Came up short of the bunker, so that was lucky. But in a classic situation of doing what you don't want to do, that happened. Yeah, it's hard mentally. That was one of the, the focus breaks that I noticed in the round um, where I let myself get into negative thinking. And really what I should have been focusing on is what I wanted to do, not what I didn't want to do, if that makes any sense. And I think that's why I ended up in that bunker. Fortunately, the Hagen came through for me there. And I was able to salvage a point there. Meanwhile, everybody else came in with their pars. And we move on to number eight, par four, 393 yards. Nice swing. There is a beautiful drive from Dave. Like me, uses an iron off the tee and hits it well. Definite overswing right there. Fortunately, that tree saved me from going even further left. That 
couldn't get a lot of club head behind the ball there with the, with the ball being in the rough. And then found myself on the rough on the right side. This is a blind approach into the green from over here. It ended up okay, actually. And that was my McGregor flanged mashy niblick for that little chip over the bunker that turned out okay. I need this one to drop for a point. That's not going to happen. All right, number nine, par five, 458 yards. We're back across the street now in the marshland area of the course. This is a uh, part of the original Bendelo design. You couldn't quite see the ball flight without the shot tracer, so I put the tracer on these tee shots. Generally, if I can show you where the ball lands in the fairway, or in my case, sometimes the rough, <laughs> uh, I'd like to be able to show you that without the shot tracer. But uh, certain lighting situations over the course of the round kind of dictate what I can show you, what I can zoom in on effectively. And uh, in that case, uh, shot tracer is necessary. That's just to give you a little background on why I use it when I use it. Okay. This is one of the few shots that I saw Dave use his brassy. Had quite a bit of distance here to cover. I'm using the Tom Stewart driving iron, which is a rare instance for me. I have a tendency to dig this club. That shot turned out okay, though. And that is my miss with the mashie. You've seen that in the last few course vlogs now. Short approaches of about 130 yards, I end up pushing those shots right. So that's the re main reason why the Tom Morris Mashie is no longer in my bag. Yeah, sometimes with uh, wood shaft clubs, if there's just enough of a bend, it's not a warp, but just enough of a bend to the shaft, sometimes even imperceptibly, that can be enough to kind of affect your shot shape or your tendency to push or pull a shot. And I think that's the case with the Tom Morris Mashie. None of these shafts are perfectly straight, obviously, after 100 plus years. You try to get them as straight as you can, but sometimes they just don't work for you how you want them to. There's another one for Tim that came up just short. I've got this putt for double bogey to save a point, and I'm able to do it. All right, so that wraps up the front nine, 52 gross, 37 net, just one over par for net, which is nice. And we head to the back nine, much shorter than the front at 24.17. Before we do that, let's show you what I'm wearing here, sponsored by Fiddler Golf Shoes. Fiddler Golf Shoes are handcrafted and Goodyear welted. You'll find the details for all of these clothes in the description for the video, including information on how to save a significant amount of money on a pair of Fiddler Golf Shoes. All right, number 10, par four, 296 yards. A lot of short par fours back here. So good scoring opportunities if you can keep it in the fairway. Definitely don't want to be over there on this hole though. So I got tree trouble here, an uneven lie. Not the best recipe, but I get lucky. Yeah, that was not the uh, plan <laughs> for that shot, but it turned out okay. This situation, I'm just trying to play it safe here. <laughs> trying to do the smart thing there, and I... Oh. I wasn't trying to challenge that bunker. I was just trying to get to the front of the green and end up sculling it through to the other bunker. So not a great start to the back nine here. Been getting a lot of good practice with the Hagen out of the sand, though. Oh. 
All right, number 11, par 3, 130 yards. Nice high ball flight for Dave. Great shot. And he finds himself with a great opportunity for birdie. Tim with a decent shot there, just on the front of the green. Here's the Tom Morris mashy. And I think you can figure out which way this ball's going. Another one that I push right. Pretty much the one spot in this hole you really don't want to be off the tee because you don't have a great look at the pin. And the rough is pretty thick here right around the green. So now I really have to scramble to try to sc uh, save a point. Great bird. Meanwhile, Dave is on cruise control at this point. So I always tell my playing partners before a round that I'm only going to show the good shots in the course vlog, uh, including the ones that go in on the green. But in the case of Tim here, I had to show you all these short putts because honestly, uh, th he should have been seven or eight strokes better uh, than his final score reflected uh, just based on how many putts came up short uh, and just needed like one more revolution to go in the cup. Nice shot. All right, moving on to number 12, par four, 244 yards. Another short one they have to play strategically based on a forced carry over some marshland into the green. That's not the good, the best spot on this hole. You yeah, want to be on the left side more so you have a, a clearer look at the green. But the ball was sitting up pretty well for me. And I only had about 120 yards left here with the mashie, so I was able to get over those trees and up toward the green. Probably one of my better shots of the round right there considering the circumstances. Excellent chip from Dave to get close there for his par. There's another short miss for Tim. I knew that was going to move pretty quick for me. All right, number 13, par four, 308 yards. Good ball. Thank you. Very nice tee shot from Tim there, right down the middle. That was a little bit lower ball flight than I'm used to seeing with the driving iron, but it worked out really well. And fantastic approach from Dave there. You can see I'm starting to get frustrated with my tendency to push the ball all the time with the mashie, but uh, I got a good hop there to the left. Still, this was a difficult chip with the green sloping back to front. And I get a few more points there. All right, number 14, par 5, 419 yards. So the tricky hole here, pretty much straight until you get toward your approach. And then you really have to play some strategic golf on this hole. This is my first time playing this hole, so I wasn't quite sure where to be. So I just aimed down the middle. I was very pleased with that tee shot, right exactly where I was looking. But I wasn't quite sure what to do with this shot, so I decided I'd lay up with the mashie. And uh, wasn't trying to hit it that hard, but uh, did not get good contact, okay. obviously. 
and that puts me in a difficult spot here, about 180 yards out. Don't want to lay up at this point. So I'm trying the Tom Stewart J iron and hoping I can hook it around the trees. Yep. And that's uh, probably above my pay grade as far as shot selection is concerned. Um, so yeah, I'm in a, in a tough spot now. Now my line is over this tree. I almost got it there, but dropped it right into the creek. So this is my sixth shot after the lost ball. Pretty much destined to not get a point on this hole. That ball got sucked into the uh, bunker, so... Didn't have much of a lip to get over here, so I thought I'd use the mashie to kind of nip it. And that actually worked out pretty well, so I'll keep that shot in mind for the future. All right, number 15, par 3, 115 yards. I was really happy with how I bounced back after that last hole with this hole. And this was kind of indicative of the focus that I was able to um, kind of get myself into despite bad shots. And this shot was right at the pin, but just a little deep. Excellent lag putt there from Tim. See the wind was whipping up here a little bit more than it was on the front nine. Another par for Dave. And a par for me. Nice. Par's all around. All right, number 16, par 4, 287 yards. This is probably my favorite hole on the course. Really liked the green complex that you'll see in a moment. Basic play here is iron off the tee, get yourself to the dog leg. Stay in the fairway, though. I know that now, after playing the hole. Hit that straight, but just a little too much. Went through the fairway. Kind of gave me a tricky lie here from the rough, using the mashie. Worked out okay, though. Good lag putt there from Dave. Yeah, and even though that didn't go in, I think that was my best putt of the round. Ooh. So I got this short one for par, which I'm able to make. Number 17, par 4, 227 yards. Very short par 4, but you got to play this smart. So iron off the tee here to give yourself a comfortable shot into the green where you're going to have to fly the bunkers. And for me, it's basically just one club off the tee. That's the Tom Stewart driving iron or the mashie. Oh, wow. And that was probably my best tee shot of the day. Put it exactly where I wanted it. 35 yards here from the hole, and I'm using the McGregor flanged mashy niblick to hit a flop shot that actually turned out pretty good. Yeah, you don't find many forced carries like that going into a green on a Hickory era course, but uh, a fun challenge there. And glad I was able to kind of pull it off with the mashy niblick. Just didn't give it enough. 
I'll take a par though. Meanwhile, Dave's got this for his birdie, and he's got it. All right, number 18, par four, 358 yards. Another overswing for me though, and I'm very far right. Right side of those trees there. So that gives me this difficult shot to get back into play. Figured I would try using the mashie to kind of punch this through the trees and got lucky. I found a hole. So I want to take a quick moment to thank Jim Davis for hosting this event. Jim is the executive director of the Society of Hicker Golfers, as well as the editor of the Wee Nip magazine for the Society of Hicker Golfers and The Golf, which is the journal of the Golf Heritage Society. So he always has a lot on his plate, but still finds time to put together this event each year, and it's a fantastic event. Definitely recommend you come up and attend at some point. I'm going to be here every year. Here's the shot of the round from Tim. Yeah, if you, um, if you come, bring your navy jacket so you look sharp for that opening photo that you saw at the beginning of the video. If you come two years in a row, you uh, earn your McNabb Cup patch, which I'm excited to pick up when I come back here in 2023. And that putt puts me out of the points for this hole, but still a fantastic round of golf for me. 34 Stableford points, and a great way for Tim to wrap up his round with that up and down. Thanks for watching this 2022 McNabb Cup, folks. Hope you enjoyed our walk around White Lake Golf Club. I wrapped up the back nine with a 48 gross, 36 net for a total of 100 gross, 73 net on the round. That lowers my season average to 104 gross, 80 net, and that's what I'm working with going into the 2023 course vlog season, which starts on the channel in just a couple weeks. If you want to find Hickory Golfers in your area to play with, join the Society of Hickory Golfers, hickorygolfers.com for more information on that. And if you want to add your name to this list of hacker backers and support the channel through Patreon or YouTube, information on doing that is in the description as well. That'll do it this week, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with another video. In the meantime, here are a few from the archive for you to check out. And as always, thanks for your support. We'll see you next time. Take care.